was that it would present a more perfect participatory democracy, um, a global network that anyone can access, where anyone can access everyone. So the question is, is that actually how we use the internet today? So as an example of that, we have Facebook. Um, and I don't know about you, but I don't really see everyone in the world up here. Um, there's me and my Facebook friends, and we have all the requisite components. So we have announcements of a lost cell phone, my roommate playing Farmville, theater ma majors trying to get onto Glee, right? So a lot of ways that you can use this network but it is a network that's smaller than our global community. So, submitted for your approval, the idea that communication constitutes a community. Um, and what I mean by that is that our communities are defined by the set of people that we're talking to. So, in a lot of ways, this isn't such a strange idea. We can see it in the term social networking. We're already thinking of our society in terms of communication networks. So. Um, I got the idea from Norbert Wiener, who, in addition to having a great name, worked on <laughs> this, uh, military research and development in World War II, and he put out a book called Cybernetics in 1948. So while he's thinking about how to build a smarter machine, he draws an analogy to the human mind, communication in humans and between humans. So as you can see up there, he says, the community extends only so far as there extends an effectual transmission of information. So we can think of a lot of communicative communities that we're in, right? And they happen at various different levels. So the smallest one might be the family unit, or moving up more in your town, or even an entire country. And we can imagine that as you get a greater number of participants, it's harder to keep everyone in perfect communication with each other. But even down at the level of the individual, people are structured as an organization within themselves of organs and cells that communicate with one another. And because these bits and pieces are in perfect communication, they have established physical channels, it allows your body to act as a singular integrated unit. So Norbert Wiener points out that people don't really work that way. We move around a lot. And particularly in his time, it was true that if you were not in your house at a given moment, you're not entering your landline, you're not receiving your mail. So this is the promise of the internet returning, right? We, have, we can conceptualize above all these individual components moving around um, a global network, a, a shared community that we can all tap into at any time with the right tools. So cybernetics conceptualizes communication as a feedback mechanism. My output becomes your input. And Norbert Wiener, when he says that communication needs to be effective, he means that it has to be understood and that theoretically it would change your next output. So any people in conversation with one another will respond differently based on what the last person has said. Um, so we see this a lot in uh, social action and grassroots uh, movements they try to get you on the level of the individual. They're always trying to get your attention personally. And we saw it in Barack Obama's presidential campaign, particularly when he was on the campaign trail, talking about all the people that he had met individually. So now that he's the president, the question is, are we still in a feedback loop with our government? Well, Facebook calls it one. So the question is, can we ever have a global village? Um, and in 1922, Walter Whitman wrote the book Public Opinion, in which he talks about the difficulty of all knowing each other and being in perfect communication. He says it's really difficult to know what's going on next door, much less across the world. So we can't see everything at once. There aren't enough hours in the day to know everyone in the world. So what do we do? We choose channels of communication based on our values and our interests. And we can think of these channels in terms of smaller participatory communities, and we can inhabit multiple ones. So how does this really work, right, with communication today? If I'm watching this YouTube video, and you're watching that one, are we in the same community? Well, maybe, because we're actually both on YouTube, so maybe we're in a shared conversation. But if I'm reading this book, and it's in English, and you're reading an article, and it's not in English, and maybe it's not online at all, then we've got separate interests that bring us into additional communities where we're not talking to each other at that moment.
So while we can think that once we were only in our physical communities, now we are in our physical communities, but also this multiplicity of participatory communities based on what we look at and what we watch. So what about reading? If we're in, <laughs> we may see from some familiar faces here. Um, if we're reading books by authors who are long gone, are we in a feedback mechanism with them? Some forms of literary theory might suggest that we are, but we're not getting feedback from a dead author in the same way that we're getting feedback from a professor on an essay. But as a matter of fact, we are right now, except for you know graduating seniors, we are getting feedback from our professors and our Gallatin community. So just to do a little audience participation here and see how our community is constructed. How many people here have read anything by Plato? Yeah, Gallatin. <laughs> all right. How about Walter Whitman? A few hands, so yeah, all right. Um, Plato and Walter Whitman. <laughs> is there anyone here without a Facebook account? A few, yeah. <laughs> So we have multiple communities within Gallatin and within NYU that allow us to operate in different spheres, around, but often around the central point of a text, which is an instance of communication in itself. So finally, how large can these communities really get? Um, Walter Whitman talked about the difficulty of maintaining a community over a certain size in which you really know everyone. And some studies have been done and uh, the numbers vary, but some people have put the maximum number of people that you can actually be in communication with and know at 150. So looking around here today, we actually have well under that number. So I just wanted to thank you for coming out to be part of our community today. <laughs>